right, uh, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, well, uh, thanks for joining. I know we're all really tired of working from home. I know I am, uh, but we all have to do our part to stop COVID-19 here in Mongolia. Uh, we need to make our plans for our New Year's greeting. And the ambassador asked me to put together this virtual meeting to talk about our highlights for the year. Uh, I know for me, going to the countryside with our MASA alumni and our Education USA team to promote education in the United States, that was certainly a highlight for me. Uh, ambassador, are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, oh yeah, I can hear you. Thanks, Greg. And uh, thanks to everybody for being here today. Um, I know this uh, seems like a big one big blur of a year and of a week, but today really is uh, uh, meeting day, not a blurs day. So I'm glad we're having this meeting today. So we really did have a very busy year in 2020. And I know, therefore, there's a lot to include in our video. So let me ask all of you, please, if you can give us some ideas on what we should be including in our greetings this year. Maybe we'll start with econ, the economics section. Barkla, same bets gano. We are very proud of the assistance that we offered this year in helping Mongolia build up the anti-money laundering capacity to earn its way off of the gray list. In just one year, basically record time, the government built an impressive regulatory and law enforcement infrastructure to fight financial crimes. There are three main ways we helped. Number one, a full-time financial crimes advisor posted within the Mongolian government to build supervisory, analytic, and regulatory capacity. Number two, we supported a sophisticated computer package known as GoAML that substantially expands the government's ability to catch suspicious transactions and criminals. And number three, we helped coordinate donor assistance. We, the United States and Mongolia together, still have a lot of work to do ahead of the 2023 review to ensure Mongolia stays off the gray list. So of course we plan to continue our strong strategic partnership in the years ahead. Bye. Oh, so that's, uh, that's great. Uh, those are great ideas, Ben. Let's definitely include that. Uh, public affairs, how about you guys? I can't, I can't hear you. C can you unmute? How about now? Oh, I can yes? hear you now. That's great. I can hear okay, you. Okay, great. So, Ambassador, we had a really busy year. As part of our strategic partnership, we started a revitalization project of all of our American corners, and we built a new American corner in Dakhan City. At these refreshed spaces, Mongolians can practice English and learn about studying in America. Speaking of studying in America, our Education USA program, which you know provides free advising to Mongolians who are interested in studying in the United States, they won two huge awards recognizing the great work that they're doing to make their programs accessible for people who live with disabilities. Of course, the pandemic forced many of our programs online, but that allowed us to interact with more of our Mongolian friends than ever before. For example, let me just share my screen with everyone and I'll show you a little bit of our Arts From Home program, which supported Mongolian artists at the start of the pandemic. It was also the 10th anniversary of the Government of Mongolia-sponsored Fulbright Foreign Student Program. This is the program where the Mongolian government sponsors grantees to study in the United States. In 10 years, 90 people have studied in America through this program, and we had a huge online event with almost a thousand participants who participated in panels and learned about the program. We're looking forward to the next 10 years. Mm, great work. I'm glad we're able to keep up with our engagement with our Mongolian friends, even as we're fighting this, uh, this pandemic. So how about the Defense Attaché's office? Thank you, sir. Can you hear me? This year, we opened five new kindergartens across Mongolia. U.S. Indo-Pacific Command financed these kindergartens, which were built by Mongolian companies to help underserved communities. The kindergartens meet both U.S. and Mongolian standards making sure the community's children can learn in a safe and warm environment. 
Let me share my screen to show you a bit more about these kindergartens. Oh, thanks, thanks. That's, that was really great. Opening of those kindergartens, that was really fun and memorable, and those kids were a lot of fun to be with. So how about you, political section? What do you have for us? Can you hear me? Yes, we got it. We hear you. We had a very busy year on the political front. I'm going to share my screen, too, to show you some photos. As you know, both our countries had important elections this year, and we had the chance to do informal Hot observation in Ulaanbaatar and two provinces. It was a wonderful opportunity for us to see Mongolian citizens exercise their democratic right to vote. And we also launched the U.S.-Mongolia Child Protection Compact Partnership. This four-year, five million U.S. dollar partnership will support Mongolia's effort to prevent child trafficking and forced child labor. And finally, Another highlight from us was a trip to Hinti province, where we visited a beautiful monastery, met with provincial and some level leaders, discussed religious freedom with members of the religious community, talked about the challenges facing rural women with civil society, and got to visit Kuknor, where Chinggis Khan was given his title. Thank you. That was really one of the most memorable things uh, of the year, truly. That's great stuff. So over to you, MCC. We're making great progress on implementing the $350 million Millennium Challenge Corporation Water Compact. This project, as you know, Ambassador, will expand Ulaanbaatar's water supply, which without urgent action would be depleted in a matter of years. This year, we've completed the designs and together with our Mongolian partners are working to bring the latest water technology to Ulaanbaatar. Oh yeah, that's really gonna make a huge difference for Ulaanbaatar. And you know, I really love this city. So thank you, MCC. Of course, USAID had lots of programs and assistance to Mongolia this last year and the arrival of our new director. So Gary, what do you have to offer by way of USAID? Thank you, Ambassador. As you know, the United States the USAID provided 50 state-of-the-art ventilators, supplies, and technical assistance to the people of Mongolia. These ventilators are being distributed to hospitals throughout the country for use by those affected by COVID, as well as patients with other medical conditions who need assistance breathing. USAID is also supporting small and medium enterprises by facilitating loans to expand their business. In its first year, the program has helped nearly 700 small and medium enterprises with the loan applications, over which half are women-owned businesses. As a result, these companies have received over 30 billion turek, or $10 million, to grow their businesses, generating 300 new jobs for Mongolians. USAID also supported Mongolia's cashmere industry through technical assistance to improve its brand recognition worldwide. As Coloradans, my wife and I are excited to be in Ulaanbaatar, which is a sister city to Denver, Colorado. In the spirit of that relationship, we look forward to meeting many Mongolians and developing many new friendships. We're really excited to have two new American officers at USAID. Okay, last but not least, over to our health unit, Dr. Suvda. Uh, congratulations again on being our locally employed staff member of the year. You really deserve it. Thank you very much. This year we worked together to help prevent and slow the spread of COVID-19 in Mongolia and keep our embassy community, Americans and Mongolians, well informed, safe and healthy. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Suvda. So to everyone else who contributed ideas for our greetings this year, thank you also. We definitely have too much to fit into one video. Oh, actually, wait, wait, wait. Uh, we do have one more thing to add. Uh, just like everyone else in the building, the consular section was really busy this year. 
Uh, I would say that our biggest accomplishment was helping Americans in Mongolia to return to the United States at the start of the pandemic. And then later in the year, we helped Americans to vote and participate in our electoral process. The last thing we want to, to include in the video is a reminder for all Americans to register in STEP so that they can keep informed on important health and safety information. There's even more I'm sure we haven't even named. We should be sure to tell people, therefore, to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook to learn more and maybe put up a link. Please thank all of our Mongolian partners and friends for all of their cooperation this last year. Despite all these challenges which the pandemic posed, all the adjustments we had to make and all of the challenges and really sorrow that the world faced this year, I am heartened by the friendship that our two countries share. And I really mean that. This was a hard year for everyone all over the world, but I think one thing I learned at least, and I think I'm also speaking for others, is that when friends stick together, we can still accomplish our goals and help each other through even the darkest times. I know 2021 will bring more challenges, but I hope it also brings lots of joy. Life will go on, we'll continue to adapt, so since all of us are working from home, let me just say right now to all of you, Happy New Year. Year? Oh, who's there? Oh, I'm just talking to some of my colleagues. Oh, hello everybody. Happy Holidays. See you in 2021. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year. Okay, okay, great. So uh, now let me see how I save a copy of this meeting. Hmm. Dear, can you help me with this? I'm not very good at technology. Oh no, I think I must have just posted it online. <laughs>